Welcome back to the Game Master's Domain, where I make homebrew for D&D. And you know the whole spiel by now, if you want to follow me on Patreon, you can get this pack under the $1 tier and do all the YouTube stuff like subscribing if you actually like the videos. So we are finally at episode 60, and it has been quite a while since I've made a lineage or a race or whatever you want to call it, but I always have fun making them, and it's really no different with the Crystallians. And you might be asking, what are Crystallians? What do they do? What do they look like? What are their abilities? And I'll tell you that here in just a minute. So first off, let's cover what a Crystallion actually is. And no, I'm not talking about the weird beanstalk rock guys from Elden Ring. Although I guess if you really wanted, you could make them, but like why? The Crystallians are a race of living gems. Think like Steven Universe, but without the weird alien stuff and merging. Or Land of the Lustrous. You could also go with the classic like Diamond Head from Ben 10. Anyone remember him? I, I hope so, I'm not that old, right? But the specific example isn't really important here. They are living rocks. They can be big, small, shiny, polished, or rough, with stone still clinging to their bodies. Some even look almost humanoid, with just small gems poking out from under their skin. But they can really look like whatever you want, and part of that comes from the fact that how they're born or created isn't really known or specific. And due to that, you can really come up with any reason why you look like damn near anything. You could be a gem dragon that has a strange illness that makes them more rock than dragon. Or an awakened pile of rocks that carved itself into a more humanoid form to fit its liking. And you can really reflavor this however you want. If you want to play a monk that is just a sentient living statue of gold, and beat people up with your very heavy but oddly soft fists, go ahead. Okay, and before we get to the actually interesting parts of this lineage, let's take a quick look at the boring stuff. Your size is medium or small, speed is 30 feet, standard, and you speak both common and Terran, the language of the plane of Earth. And your age is, um, well, you're a rock. You can be as old as you want, but I'd say at least 500 years old unless you're newly formed. And for those that still use alignment, um, I recommend you don't, and I didn't really write anything solid here for that. I more wrote about their personalities and how Crystallians are often seen as cold and distant, even though that's just a product of how they speak, where they have a tendency of hiding their feelings behind a rocky outer shell. I made Sundere rocks, didn't I? Moving on, lastly, um... I know that ability scores being tied to lineage isn't really a thing anymore, but I still wanted to put them here as mostly just suggestions. You can use these if you want, or you can just put them wherever. But I just felt like it'd be weird for people that were made of rock and stone to not be naturally hardier and tougher, so I gave them a plus two to constitution. Okay, and with that out of the way, we can now look at the fun parts the two main features being based off of crystals and gems. I really wanted something that would make them visually distinct, even among other crystallians of the same subrace. I also wanted to lean in on the supposed magical properties that some of these gems may or may not have. I mean, in fantasy, yes, they do. You can use diamonds to revive the dead, so they do have magical stuff in them. But you know what I mean. So putting those two things in the tumbler left me with birthstones. Not like actually month-based birthstones, but stones that your crystallion is, or has growing on slash in their body. There are seven of these birthstones, not eight because of reasons. Uh, these both give you a damage resistance, like amethyst giving you psychic or ruby is giving you fire, but also determine the damage type of something else. But before we get to that, we have the different gemstones that you can have inside or as part of your body. 
those being amethysts, amber, emerald, onyx, ruby, sapphire, and topaz. Each one gives its own different elemental resistance, but like I said before, you can always change that. Like, amber is for radiant damage, but if you still want to be that giant gold statue, you can just use the amber birthstone, but say you're made of gold instead of amber. Or diamond. Nothing's really set in stone, so do what you want. Now, the final thing that every Crystallion gets, no matter their birthstone or their subrace, is the ability to infuse something or someone with their stone's innate magical power. Remember how I said your birthstone would influence the damage of something? That's, that's this. You get to give one creature, so someone else, or yourself if you want, 1d4 of extra damage, the same type as your birthstone. And you also give the infused creature temporary hit points. The damage of your infusion also scales with level like your cantrips do, so level 5, 11, and 17, each one going up one geometric shape. From a pyramid to a cube to an octohedron and finally a trapezohedron, a, a d10, it's a d10. So as you grow in level, you can support yourself or your allies more and make shinier and shinier rocks. And moving past that, we can now get on to the sub-races, or sub-lineages? I don't know the term for that anymore, I should probably look it up. But anyway, I made two of those. The Brilliant Gems and the Rough Gems. Let's start off with the Brilliant Gems. These are typically more humanoid, having actual skin or at least something that looks like skin, with patches or spikes of their birthstone forming or growing out of and on their bodies. Meanwhile, rough gems are really easy to spot at a distance. They are indeed a boulder. One gets charisma as their plus one bonus, while the other one gets strength. And they also each get an ability based off of their crystal infusion that they all get. Brilliant gems get soul gems, letting them summon floating rocks around their heads that last for one minute. And while these rocks are floating around them, they get to add half of their charisma modifier to their saving throws as long as they have at least one gem remaining. But if they want, they can just throw them at you. Or anyone else. They make a charisma-based spell attack for each one they use, and the damage is equal to your infusion damage, so it scales from 1d4 all the way up to 1d10. You could also throw all of them at once, so if you're level 17, that could be 5d10 worth of whatever your damage type is, which, I mean, isn't amazing, but it's effectively free. Meanwhile, the rough gems get something a little more direct. Brilliant gems get to throw rocks. These guys can just grow crystal swords out of their arm as a bonus action. So they are never without a weapon. It does only last for one minute, but they can do it as many times per day as they want. And they also get to add their strength modifier or dex depending on what weapon they make. Did you get into a fight with another rock and make a giant pickaxe to intimidate them? Then that's strength. Or if you're more of the nimble and quick type that likes to use a rapier, then that's going to be dex. Either way though, the main damage and the damage type are still based off of your infusion damage and your birthstone. Now something I really like about the Crystallians is that they can really be anything. Sure. A rough gem might be more suited to the role of a fighter, barbarian, or even paladin with their built-in weapon. But that could also work just as well with a rogue, monk, or even a caster if they don't want to carry around the awkward dagger. And the same can be said for the brilliant gems. Those little rocks just make you better at saving throws. And guess what? Every class is going to be doing saving throws at some point. No matter what character you play, you can't just avoid all saving throws. And having them as a backup ranged weapon really isn't that bad. And I really tried to keep that in mind while I was making racial feats, since what is a playable lineage without a few feats that only they can get? And as usual, I made two of them, and one even got a spell version that you can cast on your buddies, as long as you're playing a caster. And the first of these two feats is Twin Stones, which just lets you pick another birthstone so you have a mixture of, say, ruby and onyx on your body. And with this, when you use your infusion, you get to pick which damage type to use. On top of that, you know, you get a second damage resistance. The second racial feat is Shatter Skin. 
This bumps your con up by one, since you kind of need to get hit to use it. So when you do in fact get hit with a pickaxe from that other crystallion you got into a fight with, you can use your reaction to cause your crystalline body to shatter at the area of impact, forcing the attacker to make a dex save or take your infusion damage plus your con modifier. So I did mention one of these two feats getting a spell version, and obviously that can't be Twin Stone since that wouldn't really work. So instead, Shatter Skin gets a spell called Crystal Skin, which effectively does the same thing, but you have the option of casting it on somebody else. And really, you can't really get this unless you are a caster and a Crystallion, but otherwise, go ahead. Cover your friends in crystals so that when someone smacks them, they are showered in a spray of tiny glass shards. I love the Crystallians, and like I said, I always have fun making races or lineages, and I hope you guys do enjoy playing them as much as I enjoy making them. If you like this sort of stuff, you can check out my other videos for homebrew content, or check out the Discord server if you want to join the community. That will do it for our session today though, I will see you all next time, and have a wonderful day.